Hi guys, welcome again to Mr. How Biology. So in today's video, we're gonna cover active transport and co-transport. Now we're gonna master active transport and I'm gonna show you how to get the most marks possible in that topic. Then we're gonna move on to the more complex process of co-transport and we're gonna build on what we've done in active transport and really make progress there. So stay tuned to the end of the video and don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. So let's get into it guys. Now we're gonna be looking at active transport and co-transport in detail. So what is active transport first of all then? Well, active transport involves the movement of a substance from a low concentration to a high concentration across a selectively permeable membrane. Now we can see that in this diagram here where the substance is passing through a carrier protein from a lower concentration here represented by the fewer amount of green molecules to a relatively high concentration here represented by a greater number of molecules. Now because it requires energy, that means ATP hydrolysis is involved. And the important thing to note is that active transport always involves a carrier protein, whereas facilitated diffusion can involve both. So how does active transport work then? Well, the molecule or ion binds to the receptor site on the specific carrier protein. Now make sure you're using that technical vocabulary. The molecule or ion first binds to the specific receptor site on the carrier protein. Now the next step is that the binding of ATP will then change the shape of the transport protein. So think about tertiary structures undergoing conformational changes here. Then after this, the ATP is hydrolyzed into ADP plus an inorganic phosphate represented by the PI. Now the PI is gonna remain bound to the carrier protein the substance being transported is then gonna be moved across that selectively permeable membrane against or from a low to high concentration. Now the release of the phosphate ion, so remember the phosphate ion was bound to it while the molecule was going across. When that phosphate ion gets released, this is gonna to lead to the carrier protein returning to its original shape. Again, think about specific complementary tertiary protein structure here. Now, what affects the rate of active transport? Well, first of all, the number of carrier proteins available. And this is similar to facilitated diffusion. So the more carrier proteins that are available, the faster the rate that active transport can occur. Now, another thing that can affect the rate of active transport is ATP availability. So if there's plenty of ATP, those ATP molecules are going to be able to bind to the specific carrier protein. They're gonna get hydrolyzed, leaving phosphate behind. That's gonna give the energy to cause the carrier protein to change shape and transport across the molecule or ion. Now that ATP is gonna come from aerobic or anaerobic respiration. Now a top tip is that if respiration is inhibited, for example by a toxin, this can slow the rate of active transport. And I've seen this in past paper questions in the past. And it's important to know that if respiration is inhibited, there won't be as much ATP, so active transport may either be unable to occur or it may occur more slowly. Now, the speed of active transport is not affected by the concentration gradient of the substance being moved. Think about it, it's going from low to high anyway, so concentration gradient isn't really a factor because those proteins are changing shape and almost forcing the molecule through the phospholipid bilayer. Now, we've covered active transport. That's our foundational knowledge there. Now it's time for co-transport. I would highly recommend drawing this diagram, covering it up and then trying to draw it from memory, covering it up, then trying to write down the steps, and then checking if you got it right. So what we've got here is an epithelial cell. Now, you can tell I've made this diagram in paint. I'm quite, I'm quite happy with it, to be honest. It's got all the bits and pieces we need, but it definitely has room for improvement. But here we go, I'm trying for you guys. So at the top, we can see we've got microvilli. Now they're gonna increase the surface area for absorption. And we've got sodium going from a high concentration 
to a low concentration. Pretty straightforward stuff. That's going to bring glucose with it against its concentration gradient. So in your notes, when you're writing this up, make sure you say sodium ions enter the epithelial cell down the concentration gradient, but glucose moves against its concentration gradient. Now, co-transport has three kind of steps going on, three main steps. Now, the second one is that we have the sodium-potassium pump. So sodium is actively transported out of the epithelial cell into the blood by the sodium-potassium pump. Now, because this is an active process, it's going to require ATP, okay? So that's going to get hydrolyzed, phosphate's going to remain bound, and that's going to provide the energy for the carrier protein to change shape, moving sodium across the membrane. Then it's going to return to its original position when the phosphate detaches. Now, that's going to establish a concentration gradient for sodium and make sure that we don't reach equilibrium. So it's going to keep co-transport happening. Now, at the bottom right corner, we can see that glucose leaves the epithelial cell via facilitated diffusion, and then it enters the bloodstream represented by this red capillary at the bottom. Now, it goes through facilitated diffusion because it's too large to cross the membrane. And like we looked at in an earlier topic, large polar molecules cannot get straight through the phospholipids. To summarize then, Active transport moves molecules and ions against the concentration gradient. It uses energy from ATP. It only involves carrier proteins. Co-transport, on the other hand, is where two molecules move through a co-transporter together. So that's what the protein is called. Now, in co-transport, one molecule moves down its concentration gradient whilst another moves against. So that's us finished with active transport and co-transport. Hope it helped you guys. Take care and I will see you in the next.